it's an honour to be here today to be asked and I um, also wanted to say it wasn't difficult to choose a topic like partnerships in Gondwana because I know many of you have contributed years or um, substantial contributions to the work of Gondwana Link um, and so it was not and I think all of you probably share a deep love as I do for the south coast and the lower southwest um, so it wasn't difficult um, to choose it. Um, I, the acknowledgements on this slide, or the icons at the bottom, are actually for the slides of, of the PowerPoint. So, and we heard the power of imagery. So this is acknowledging the many powerful images contributed for this PowerPoint. And I hope that the partnerships speak for in each of the slides. So Gondwana Link um, is this powerful vision of connected country across the Lower Southwest. And it started as for eco-restoration, but in fact it's become equally a cultural reconnection as well, honouring our First Nations um, and the Manang and Pibbleman and Garang people and the, the parts of Gondwanalink that I work. Um, so yeah, it's a big vision and that's probably what's inspired many of us to keep going over the decades because it's, it seems to bring together everything we find joyful and meaningful in working together. So Gondwana Link is a partnership. It's made up of many um, people. That images like that capture the diversity of people from across the political spectrum, across the private and public spheres, First Nations and immigrants like myself, um, across the genders. It's a real rainbow alliance um, and all critically dependent on partnerships. Um, there's some of the many icons um, of the logos of the groups that have been involved. Um, it's not centralised, so it's partnerships which are about working together and so on. Of course, some partnerships are much longer lasting than others, and I've had to think deeply about what makes a good partnership, um, and especially, you know, someone coming from um, an immigrant to Australia, from a um, from Southern Africa, from a farming background, from a minority cultural group, um, and thinking, how am I going to understand the people that I'm amongst? And so I still do a lot of reflection how I can build more effective partnerships with the people I work with. But um, Gondwana Link's all about that, and it's been part of the learning, is how all of us get on together. Um, this captures a lot, and um, Gondwana Link spends a lot of time documenting and there's wonderful films and artworks out there that are available to capture the diversity of partners and people involved and um, increasingly it's been the participation of wonderful elders who have really given Gondwana Link and all this and many of the subgroups real um, energy and vitality for working together it's been a, a great privilege um, Example is partnerships with the university. So Professor Steve Hopper has been a tireless supporter of many of our groups and, and the overall vision um, and providing that critical background science. We heard a little bit about um, today the importance of that monitoring and feedback in science. So Steve Hopper's work critically showed that we were on the right spot, that where we were focusing our energy was indeed the hotspots within the hotspot incredibly important biodiversity and Steve's been increasingly more of an advocate as well so it's been wonderful to see scientists go on to be um, advocates as well and thanks to all that work this is some of the properties bought between the initial place the priority for Gondolink Link between the Fitzgerald and Stirling ranges so that's the bush heritages of this world um, the Greening Australia is supported by the Nature Conservancies and many, many donors and private individuals. So, um, so that was the starting building blocks. There's um, an aerial vision of Naunup, um, in the pr actually handing, uh, handed over, I think even this week, to the, U the Eads Family Foundation. So a real partnership. There's so many different organisations that are expressed in that very landscape. Um, and there's some more visions from images from Nauna showing the, what happens when one combines the strengths of an eco-restoration movement with a social justice movement, with a peace movement, um, and that's the type of wonderful experience that happens. 
Um, the Great Western Woodlands is a critically important part of, of Gondwanling and probably one of the success stories. So the, um, starting from 2008 onwards, there's been amazing success in cultivating Naju people taking ownership of what was their traditional land. So there's now, the first hit was millions of hectares in native title and then um, indigenous protected areas and um, a very long-term active ranger group mentored by Gondwan Link, but now in its um, up and running in its own right. So a real success story in terms of empowering um, First Nations people on, on, what, on, on their lands. Um, and a vision, again, showing partnerships in action between white and black and young and old. Um, and those partnerships also built on friendships, but also respecting and, and trustworthy, tr trusting um, colleagueship. So I was thinking of Sylvia's comment about friendships. I don't think we need to have our networks and partnerships built just on friendships, but particularly on trusting and um, respectful colleagueship. So we, we don't have to all be friends, but we can certainly build um, very substantial partnerships by that trust and relationship building. Um, and another great success story this month, you know, we have the end of old growth log well, logging in our native forests, um, and this is Jess Beckerling, so it's the WA Forest Alliance itself, a fabulous example of, of par partnerships. Um, and so the southern forests are now about to go on a, um, hopefully, a, a much better trajectory of management, and it's thanks to the, the sub sub-network within a network that is the WA Forest Alliance. Um, another great example of partnerships is the Margaret River Nature Conservation. So a real standout in terms of a local group doing outstanding work in that very eastern part of Gondwana Link. Um, for the section that we in um, the Great Southern have focused on, the Forest to Stirlings, this is working with farmers, and that's been um, the focus that I've had, is how we bring broadacre farmers onto, on board. Um, and that takes a particular group of a set of skills and understandings. One's really got to understand the perspective of, of the farmers and their farming systems and their political perspectives and so forth. Um, but they, as with all of Landcare, you know, we work with the willing, and it's been an amazing experience working here um, with farmers that want to protect their bushland and do the strategic revegetation and so on, so forth. And so, um, lots and lots of on farm visits. In this case, it's whole property surveys and partnering with the Gilamai, one of the NRM sub subgroups. Um, lots of fencing. So, this is the classic NRM um, Landcare work partnering with Greening Australia, so all the reveg around the North Cranbrook Lakes could happen thanks to biodiversity and carbon funding and partnerships with Greening Australia. Partnerships with um, the local ranger groups to trial new um, regeneration methods around our salt lakes. Um, so we turn now to the Stirlings to um, forests and Ballagup Farm, which the landholders have made available. That's the Hordacre family for a whole suite of of community and citizen science projects, including a sanctuary. So I'm very keen to tap into the Odonata Foundation. I'm sure we all are. Um, even this map, which shows all the most highest priority um, farms between the Stirlings and the is based on years and years of science and collaboration and multi-stakeholder involvement just to get the knowledge behind that map. Um, our particular project is Tutanilla, and I wanted to show, fo show case, what I think is an outstanding partnership, where Green Skills used its own funds and donor support to buy the land, 50 hectares for 215,000, and Carbon Positive Australia has done the restoration with Jeff Whittle, and um, probably investing a further 100,000. We've, we've now invested a further 50,000 from donors in visitor facilities, um, and made a whole suite of YouTube videos. And, Talking about communication, I think YouTube's got an outstanding role for all of our groups. So these are some of the videos we made that are available on our Green Skills YouTube channel <laughs> and highlighting partnerships with elders. We've had six elders very involved in, in our projects in the last three years on this particular property. Um, 
this is, whoops, um, this is the, I'll just go back. That was our launch of our visitor facilities that shows the property. And just two weeks ago, we had a partnership with a range of arts organizations like the Butter Factory and Elders in Mount Barker, including the daughter of Bella Kelly, a well-known Noongar artist, um, funded by CBH, Southern Ports, and the Kuribup Trust. So there's a whole suite of partnerships in there. And here we are back here. And I just wanted to appreciate all of you for, the, for being here today, a massive partnership, which is the WA Landcare Network, and for the work you do in your neighborhoods and community. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, so on behalf of the Rehabilitating Row 8 project and the advisory committee, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians uh, of this land and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. Now, um, there is a lot of history, a fair bit of history, uh, behind the um, Row 8 um, and uh, the project. I'll just do this very briefly. Um, I, I love this photo. This is uh, Kim's photo, actually. I this photo. <laughs> um, I think it sums up uh, the fact that Colin Barnett uh, greatly um, underestimated um, his uh, his foe in this uh, in this battle, um, and uh, he's he's at the um, he's trying to get a photo op um, for his election campaign, and something uh, slightly different has uh, turned up. Um, and uh, it illustrates also the, the amazing creativity um, and uh, how, how clever and uh, dedicated uh, the, these people who protected this land were, um, mostly women, I'll point out. Um, so in, uh, in late 2016, um, this all came to a head. There were massive protests. It was incredibly um, controversial, this project. But unfortunately, the, uh, the clearing did uh, go ahead. Uh, roughly 15 hectares of uh, beautiful Banksia woodland and some wetlands was cleared, um, unfortunately. But um, this led up to um, the state election in March 2017. Uh, Mark McGowan came into power. The first, pretty much the first thing he did was he stopped this project going ahead. And um, then, uh, in about a year later, the uh, Rehabilitating Row 8 project uh, started. Um, so uh, the governance um, and funding comes from the state government, uh, Main Roads WA. Um, the management comes from the city of Coburn. Um, and also, we have uh, a very important body called the Rehabilitating Row 8 Advisory Committee, which is made up of the community. Now, of these three bodies, the, the last one is who I consider my boss to be. This is a community-led project, and um, I, I, I take the, uh, the lead from the, uh, from the community, what they want from this project, and, and that's what I do my best to uh, implement. <coughs> uh, the location is pretty much right here, uh, a few hundred metres um, north of here. Uh, if, if you zoom in on it, uh, it basically runs from Bibra Drive in the east to um, Stock Road in the west. Ecologically, it's a very busy place, so there are si seven distinct ecosystem types um, in this um, amazing corridor. Um, just a summary of the activities of what we've done in the last five years. Um, over 270,000 seedlings have been planted. Uh, we do monitoring to inform adaptive management. We control feral animal control, fencing, um, paths and signage. Uh, we do a lot of events and also community consultation, engagement and involvement, involving. Um, and this is one of our um, planting events that we have every year. And there's a bit of habitat enhancement as well. We've got Perth's first off-grid cocky trough. Uh, we've got some habitat boxes, native bee hotels, and that kind of thing. Now, we've come a long way in the last six years. So this photo I took um, during the clearing. Um, it's a pretty devastating thing to see. I live about a kilometre from where this photo was taken. It was an 
incredibly hard for the people who lived in this area and loved the bush. Um, and the photo, next photo I'm going to show you is uh, six years later. And that's it. Um, if you sit and look at this tree, you can, it's a pretty good match for um, that um, up there. And we've got um, coppice from the eucalypts. Uh, some of the coppice is over 10 metres tall. The zamia palms are doing the same thing. Um, there's um, self-seeded plants in there and there's obviously um, tube stock that's gone in there. Um, custodianship is something that we've heard a lot about today and I think it's really important. Custodianship and a connection to country is what saved this land. You know, people wouldn't have locked on and they wouldn't have protested in, you know, 40 degree heat and that kind of thing if they didn't love this land. And so um, what I've been trying to do is to con uh, facilitate and support that um, custodianship um, in, in my role. The Coburn Community Wildlife Corridor is, uh, is an amazing group um, that works in, in this space. And we have a few people from CCWC here today. Uh, the work they do is just amazing. They, they hand weed this part of the corridor uh, they're out there every fortnight um, in the year, pretty much on a Saturday morning, um, doing hand weeding. And um, I've seen that, and I've just, I'm just blown away by, you know, what, what, that, uh, what that achieves. It's just incredible. And so what I thought, well, what we need to do is to clone these people. So <laughs> how are we going to do that? So what I've tried to do is I've, I've facilitated a new group um, which is called the Karak Kubi Bush Carers. Uh, so they're working in uh, an amazing part of the corridor called the um, Karak or Malvolio Bushland and um, they are starting to do the same kind of thing as um, CCWC. So um, that's pretty exciting I think. And one last little thing that happened in the last week I've been working with a, a mob of Noongar people um, and we got our first event off um, last weekend and working with uh, a few um, young kids to build a what I call a quenda cabin. Some people call them bandicoot bungalows. Um, <laughs> so that was, that was um, great to be able to do that with uh, uh, Mitchell Garlett and Heidi Mippy and we're hoping to do more of that work um, in the next um, few years. Um, that's pretty much it from me. There are my contact details if you need to get in touch. And I'm going to hand over to Kim now. Yes, that's us. Um, hi, I'm Kim Drabniex. And I'm short. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. So I'll be quick. Uh, these are some of the fantastic people that were out there six, seven years ago helping save this land and we've brought back together. Um, and we um, have formed a lot of partnerships in, in bringing the Carrot Kubi bush carers together. The first thing that happened was um, talk about feral cats. I had a friend's feral cat um, bite me, ended up two days in hospital, had a chance to read this backwards from Urban Bushland <laughs> Council <laughs> and wrote a proposal after Adam had said, hey, we really need a new group. So um, looking at Urban Bushland Council's reports and developed a, a program to bring our group together, Friends of Mulvarelio Bushland, um, and looked at you know, some of the things that we needed. They talked about having bump events, which is you know, where people come to an event, they bump into their neighbours, so they come back next time and they, and they get to do... So we've, we've tried to develop a little bit through that. Um, so one of the partnerships, um, I guess, was started with Rehab Row 8, and they were able to do some things like give us equipment and bits and pieces, but also do some branding for us. So that was a great head start. In, okay, we called ourselves Carrack after that piece of land had already been named through community consultation as Carrack. And the Coburn community, no, sorry, the, the yeah, Coburn community is, no, 
Kubalup Community Association um, asked us to put the word Kubi in there because they wanted to, to... So we ended up calling ourselves Carrick Kubi um, Bush Carers. Apparently, you can't call yourself weeders. Bush carers has to be the word, so I have to always say we're bush caring, not weeding. <laughs> and so having that um, bit of um, branding has been really helpful. The Wildflower Society has always ha also helped us in that um, <coughs> partnership by we've, we've um, They've uh, allowed us to buy the pro of Canva, and so we can do some more work on that. Um, the city of Coburn provided the residents with a Canva workshop. Perfect timing. We're able to find out how to use that a little bit more. So, um, yeah, so that's been terrific in being able to use that to publicise ourselves, to be able to get a branding together. And... Uh, We've been connecting with uh, as many people as we can. Obviously, the Coburn Community Wildlife Corridor and there's other groups, I said, and we, we had our launch. So we invited every MP I could get my hands on. Um, we didn't have too many turn up, but they know about us. You know, they got a, information about that. The mayor did come and we asked them to plant a tree. He immediately said, right, kids, you're coming in to help me plant the, the tree as well and got them involved. Um, so the children did a mandala around the tree um, and they were involved with that. And so hopefully they will give them ownership in their local group, uh, in their local area. Um, and, so, and we're able to, you know, just engage the community in a fun event. So we hope this was one, our, one of our first bump events, plus the events that um, Rehab Row 8 put on, like the Fauna talks and um, the other events that we're having. So in the next planning for the next year, we want to do things like a poetry talk or an art day. So it's not only our bush caring, but we do other bits and pieces and make sure we connect up uh, the Kubalup um, Community Association invited us to their Kubi Fest. That was another chance to talk to a lot of people. So we have to keep these partnerships in our... And, and this is the micro compared to, say, Gondwana Link, which is the macro. But this is really important for a brand new group that's only been going for a few months to be able to connect through um, with as many people as possible. So we're now doing fortnightly um, bush caring, finishing off with a beautiful morning tea. And I guess this links in with the talks earlier about getting it out on uh, social media and, and the, the good views of us having cake and, and having fun, making sure we're publicising ourselves as, as, as a nice group to come to. And it seems every fortnight we get another local resident that walks in and says, oh, I'm going to come and help today. So that's what we hope to build up in the long term. So thanks very much. Thank you.